Nation. A fit and tanned is day 68. Two days to go, and I sent out an email to remind you to book your scan. So if you have not, please make sure you do. And if you can't get in, because I think that most of the spaces on Saturday are taken, they may all be taken by now. There's still some times on Friday. So if you can't get in, let me know, and then we'll do our best to get you in. I'm still missing a good amount of you, probably a dozen people, if not book their, their final scan. Let's get in, let's see how you did. Let's get the completion rate up, okay? All right, um, feedback. I got one more feedback here, so let's get into it. This person writes, um, this is under name, something specific you can improve upon for the following week. Continue to be mindful of emotions that trigger overeating. I'm noticing it is tied to feelings of frustration. Hitting a wall at work, school or procrastination on difficult tasks. I think I associate some of these fast calories from low prep foods with quick comfort energy bursts. Uh, brackets, sugar. All right, so this is very, very common. Food is a, an outlet for people. Stress, okay, different forms of stress, whatever. It could be your partner, it could be lingering tasks, something you've got to work on for school, perhaps. Um, it could be uh, boredom. It's, it's just often an outlet for people. And we've got to be really, really, really careful with this. Um, so one thing that uh, I think is really great about this is that you realize this. So we're not just sort of like lizard brain where we say, oh, I'm not really going to think about this. I'm just going to kind of react to uh, my feelings and I'm going to immediately go to something that's going to comfort me. You're going to stop. I mean, what you're doing here essentially is you're, you're reflecting on what's going on and why you're doing what you're doing. And this is really, really important because ultimately if you can get a hold of what is taking you off track, you essentially put a stop to what is taking you off track, right? So we want to be ultimately in control. We don't want um, these, uh, these, out these outside, in this case, I'm really going to, point to these things as poisons. We don't want these poisons to take control of us, right? So um, making note of it sounds to me like maybe you did make note of it is really, really important. Finding other things that are going to be outlets for you to put in place. So for example, uh, today was a perfect day for a walk and it does get you out of your environment. It gets you out, it gets you some sunlight which is going to help with dopamine. It's going to help you make, it's going to help you to feel better. You're also going to burn some calories as well. That's always a bonus, but really not going there when I speak about this, really just about trying to change your, your mood, give you a different scenery uh, or doing some other form of exercise or some other task. Maybe it's reading one of your favorite books, you know, that you, that you, you know, something you enjoy reading or, um, getting together with somebody, right? For an hour for coffee, uh, rather than going towards the food, right? So if we can try to set ourselves up with a framework and set ourselves up with rules and not break those rules, uh, I think this is one strategy. Um, of course, I'm by no means a psychologist, but, um, but I do think if we can build some awareness and we can see ourselves breaking and we know that we're doing, we're going towards, we're breaking certain habits that we're trying to build. Uh, at least if we have that, that uh, awareness, we can, uh, you know, hopefully put some things in, like I mentioned, that will prevent us from at least going down these avenues, which can often snowball, right? They spiral out of control. Because quite often, if you break that habit, if you do it once and you figure, well, I might as well just do it again. And if I've done it twice, I might as well do it a third time. And it just goes from there. And it only makes you feel worse. Um, and, and unfortunately, the downfall with these things is it, it is, as I mentioned, it snowballs. So a lot of these foods, for instance, will elicit certain things in us uh, where uh, we, we want to... Uh, do it again, right? Because it makes us feel good. So um, 
try to look for other things that you find enjoyment in life with and put those in. That's going to be my suggestion. Okay. And not go for the food. Try to keep your food within a certain framework. Try to keep the rules. So for example, uh, even if we said, okay, I'm going to say, go ahead and eat. But instead of whatever you're eating, I'm not sure, but um, let's just say it's candy. Um, you know, going towards, I don't know, an apple with peanut butter. Okay. At least you're going to get a lot more nutrition out of that than what you are with, uh, if you go with these highly palatable foods, it's just disastrous because they don't, they don't provide you with satiety. And on top of that, they give you an, like an overproduction of, um, of, you know, some of these neurotransmitters that are going to just make you feel better. And, you know, but this, they're going to be spikes of, of this neurotransmitter or these neurotransmitters. And you're just going to go back to them again because those spikes are just not going to last. Right. So we want it. We want to indulge in something that's going to serve us well, not something that's going to take us down. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Name something specific you need help with. Kettlebells and cables, these two kinds of gym equipment. I'm not well versed in and no, I have much to learn. Yeah, I mean, especially with, you know, cables are kind of something more dedicated towards hypertrophy work, um, direct hypertrophy work. You're not going to get a lot of other slices of the fitness components involved. Uh, so let me give you an example. If you're doing, and, and kettlebells would not be included in this because kettlebells, a lot of traditional kettlebell work involves this. But so for example, if you're doing something like, a, you know, a barbell squat or something, there is a lot of stability that has to be in, there's a lot of stability that's involved. Um, to some degree, there is going to be um, some synergy between the muscles that has to work. So it's so a lot of coordination in that regard. Um, and more muscular control, et cetera, that's, that's going to be involved. Then if you're doing something where you're using cables or a machine for that matter, where you're just focusing on working the muscle. And that's why these things like cable, cables are great for hypertrophy, just really focusing on one element. Um, but I like to get, you know, some crossovers between different components of fitness and get more bang for your buck like you do from kettlebells. Now kettlebells are sort of generally speaking, they are just another form of resistance training. Um, but there's usually specific movements tied to these things like windmills, uh, Turkish get-ups, kettlebell swings, etc. But you could do things like farmer's walks with kettlebells. You can do things like uh, banded marches with kettlebells, uh, etc. So, um, and I mean, you could do presses and all that kind of stuff. Um, so kettlebells in that way are, you know, similar to dumbbells. Um, although traditionally speaking, like I said, there's some, there's some of these movements that we just typically don't do with, with, uh, with dumbbells that are attributable more to kettlebells. Um, so I think kettlebells are, are, are a great thing to institute in addition to all your dumbbell and barbell work. Cables for you, nah, depends on your goals, but I don't think they're really that important. All right. Nine minutes, just about monotony. Okay. So. This is under, is there anything you'd like me to cover in this week's video series? Monotony of success, all my good habits come in waves. Uh, what to do when we get bored with our good habits? How do you prevent, how do you, excuse me, how to power through? All right, let's talk about that tomorrow. Um, you know, just coming back to, to um, I just wanna mention one more thing about this. This first point that we mentioned about being aware of what's, you know, contributing to um, you know, you or whoever it is falling off track with your diet specifically. Um, you know, I was listening to, uh, because it just reminds me of listening to a podcast recently about the role of leptin involved in obesity and how you may have seen headlines in the news, about obesity being, you know, something that's hereditary. And of course, you know, this is a side point, but 
you know, obesity is not something that you, you don't inherit body fat, but what you do is you can inherit things that will cause you to eat more. So, you know, and a big factor in this is leptin production, which is basically a hormone that your fat tissue releases and then basically checks in with the hypothalamus essentially that like the type, the hypothalamus basically has receptors for leptin and it helps to regulate how much we eat. So it tells us, you know, when to eat. Uh, and some people have leptin resistance. So some people have a harder time managing their food intake. That is they overeat because their body is essentially telling them that they're hungry because they don't have that same sort of insulin, uh, insulin uh, that same le uh, leptin resistance. So coming back to this point here, I don't know how hard it is for people. It's, it's, you know, and that's why when I sit down with each and every one of you, or when I speak to you face to face, it's sort of an area that I can't really comment on. I don't know how hard it is. And I, it is something that will vary from person to person. So, you know, in terms of the amount of food that you eat and how hungry you feel, that's going to vary from person to person. Um, you know, when it comes to generally speaking, metabolic rates, and all these types of things, we're pretty much on the same playing field, pretty much, okay? Even between different age groups. Um, but, you know, leptin is one part of that. And then of course, um, you know, the amount of movement that we do in the day, etc. And this is, again, all gonna be dependent on the person. And genetically, we can be influenced by these things. And, and, and so it can be harder for some people, right? So we just kind of have to, do our best with what we have. Okay, maybe I'll speak more about leptin tomorrow because it is a really interesting topic. Um, okay, message of the day. So just sort of speaking on what I was mentioning about kind of what gets uh, measured gets managed. What gets measured gets managed. This is why, this is why I have you guys measure your food because you know, we have all these ways of energy output and it's not all about energy output, at least not directly energy output. Um, but there's many, there's many facets to energy output. There's only one, there's only one way we get energy in. And that's via food consumption, right? So ultimately we want to measure this and we want to try to manage it. And at the very least, become aware of what we're doing on a daily basis. All right, so, <clears throat> you know, as we lead out of this challenge and and, and move on, the, um, well, there's many things I can say, but one thing that's super, super important, especially if you struggle with food intake, is to just always write out, list, try to measure, but at the very least, list out what you're doing on a daily basis and, and become aware of it. Or maybe you are already aware of it, I don't know. Okay, but again, um, I wanna remind you that what gets measured gets managed. It's very similar to accounting. Just imagine trying to run a business, trying to have a certain amount of um, profit in your account, and you're, you're managing your money by doing something like this, closing your eyes and crossing your fingers, right? It's just, it just doesn't work. So we've gotta have a management system. Um, anyways, I'm going to wrap it up there. Positive energy, positive vibes. Believe in yourself for the love of God. Give some gratitude. And uh, if you haven't booked your scan, please make sure you do. Reach out to me if you need me to open up more times on Saturday. And I will. Talk to you guys all later. See ya.